Welcome to the inaugural episode of On the Record with Zafar Subhan. I am Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan and my guest today is His Excellency Yusuf Ramadan, the Palestinian ambassador to Bangladesh and dean of the diplomatic corps here in Dhaka. Yusuf bhai, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time to join me today. It's really a pleasure. As we speak, Gaza remains under a brutal blockade. It has now been running for over a week. Every day the death toll mounts and every day the situation of the Palestinian population of Gaza becomes more dire. Please start by outlining for our listeners what is the current situation in Gaza. Can you try to explain to them the suffering of the Palestinian people under the ongoing onslaught? Well, thank you very much. Good morning to the listeners, to all Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I wanted to just uh, correct one thing. I'm the dean of the OIC. Okay. Uh, not all the diplomats. Okay. There's another ambassador for that. All right. uh, first of all, I wanted to say that I, I cannot find the right wording. There is no words in any dictionary which can express the truth what's been going on in Gaza. The suffering of the Palestinian people in Gaza Strip is tremendous. I haven't seen this, their suffering even in a movie. In reality, I don't think such suffering has existed. This is the first time. The people, the Palestinian people, in general and in Gaza in particular, uh, are being stripped of their humanity. While Israel is targeting civilians, uh, especially women and children. They, our people in Gaza are really starving. We are not just seeing it in order to get your feeling and support, but this is the truth. Our hospitals ran out of most of the most important medicine in order to treat the 10,000 wounded people. There is no drinking water. People, some people are running to the sea to get water from the sea. And there is no food. There is no security. We are worried very much about mainly the children of Gaza who represent from the total 3,000 dead, almost over 1,000. So it's more, than, it's approximately 42% of the total casualty in Gaza are children. And more than 62% or 63% are children and women. And most of the rest is normal civilians. So I just wanted to see, as Israel claim, where is those fighters among the dead? I don't see. I don't see. I, I didn't see any so far. So that's why I'm saying this war, <coughs> it's a revenge war against the civilian. It seems to me and it's clear that the Israeli government and Netanyahu in particular are targeting the numbers, targeting numbers, not choosing between civilian and military. That's why the vast majority of the dead and injured are from the civilians. So what does that mean to Netanyahu and what does that mean to the Western world and what does that mean to the Muslim and the Arab worlds? To him, it's a revenge. It's an invoice. It's a bill that he have to pay and present to his right wing collusion that here I have killed that much and I have injured that much from the Palestinian to the international community. To the Western world, I hope that they will see the situation in Palestine from both eyes, not from the Israeli eyes only. And please treat us as a normal human being. Show us your values. I am talking to the governments, not to the people, because the people in the West have shown us our, their support, and we We've highly appreciate We've that. We've seen this. We've Absolutely. seen marches in London, in Berlin, all over the world. We want those governments to catch up with their people. 
Yes. And do exactly the same what the people want. You call yourself a democracy. Yeah. Democracy means you fulfill the need and desire of your people, of the majority of your people. You're not doing that. You're helping and you're supporting Israel. You're standing blindly behind Israel. You're giving everything to the Israeli. We want nothing from you, but one thing only. We want justice. We demand justice. I wanted to send a message from one of the Palestinian doctor who graduated from Bangladesh from Silhet University. Exactly. Yeah. Yesterday night I spoke to him. I don't want to mention his name for his security. We have several Palestinian, almost 30 Palestinian doctors in the field now graduated from Bangladesh. Yeah. I spoke to many of them, but one specifically said, tell my brothers and sisters in Bangladesh that we are, have a spirit no one has. And this spirit will always be there with us. And this spirit will help us to fight because we fight for justice. We fight for freedom and they fight for evil. And that's why we will win. That was his message. Saying that I wanted to thank each professor and doctor in my university who taught me how to stretch a wound or how to treat a wounded person or how to treat an injured and so on and so on. So he is and all of our students who graduated from Bangladesh and became a doctor now in the battlefield in all the hospitals distributed, in all whole hospitals in Gaza Strip. So we highly appreciate you, Bangladeshi. Uh, we appreciate that. And I think, um, you know, Bangladeshis, of course, have a feeling for the Palestinian people. It is not just the fact that, you know, it's, uh, uh, the, you know, m most Palestinians are Muslims and, you know, we have that, uh, that sense of kinship. I think it is also we as Bangladeshis understand people fighting for their self-determination, for dignity to live for their place on earth because of course of our history with the liberation war and of course i think the palestinian cause is a very close one to the heart of your average bangladeshi of all bangladeshis is there anything more if there's anything you could ask us what could we do as bangladeshis to help the cause to help palestine today well i think what bangladesh is doing the people of bangladesh and the government of bangladesh as well but mainly the people of Bangladesh, a tremendous job, really. Because they were the first to start demonstrating, the first in the world, the first to express solidarity, the first to express their full support, the first to make donation, and mm. a very, very, very generous donation. We are very grateful to you, Bangladeshi. Now, in the future, when they open the border, we might need medicine, okay? Mainly medicine. Um, I have a tremendous support from my colleagues of the OIC, the ambassadors of the OIC. Yes. In fact, all of them. Yeah. Uh, they said we are willing to work as a. They are as a Palestinian ambassador today. So you don't have one ambassador. You have so many ambassadors yes. of Palestine in Bangladesh. I just wanted to say that tomorrow, inshallah, we have appointment with the Honorable Prime Minister. Fantastic. We're going to meet her, all the OIC ambassadors, yes. going to her house. And we're going to explain the situation to her, which I'm sure she's already of course. been informed. <clears throat> uh, we need medicine. Yes. We do need medicine because hospitals in Gaza Strip have no generator because... There is no fuel for yes. generator which give the ventilator ventilating ventilating system power. Yes. No, we've seen these uh, these uh, these uh, pictures. It's really quite shocking the situation uh, there is. There was a picture in uh, my newspaper, the Dhaka Tribune. We ran uh, we ran it in today's newspaper, in fact. Yeah. And it's um, I think that is one thing we can help with uh, yeah. medicines, and I think we need help from all over the world. Uh, for the absolutely, Palestinian people. Absolutely. Um, because it's a, it's a humanitarian catastrophe. I know. We're going to receive help from all over the world, definitely. Yeah. And mainly from the Western country who support Israel 
yeah. military and politically. But when the medicine comes from Bangladesh, it means something else. That's also true. For the people of Palestine, when it's written on it in Bangla in Bengali language, yeah. it will mean a lot for us. Yes. And that is the significant uh, yes. about no, well, Like this I issue. said, you know, and I think we need to show solidarity. We need to stand um, shoulder to shoulder on this. But tell me, uh, Yusuf, uh, what, uh, what happens next? Is there likely to be a ground invasion of Gaza? I mean, already the situation is a catastrophe. I could <laughs> see things getting worse. How will it end? Well, this question has to be asked for a general, actually, an army right. expert general. Yes, but uh, just my view as a, a diplomat, as I said before, that what happened on the 7th of, of October was devastating for Israel, for sure. It ruined the image of Israel, completely yes. ruined the military image, the intelligent image, which considered the world was be, shocked. The world was shocked. They were more shocked. Yes, and it was really unbelievable. It's something unbelievable. Whether you agree with it or you disagree with it, that's another issue. I'm talking about from a professional point of view. It was. I don't think themselves, the people who made the offensive, believe that it's going to be that much success. Yes. This is, they may be surprised themselves. They were maybe yes. surprised. It was so easy. Anyway, but I think uh, the ground invasion, as I said, Netanyahu wants to present the invoice yes. that he paid. Yes. And this invoice has to be in blood. high. In blood. Yes. In blood. Obviously, in blood. Yes. In blood. So he think uh, in order to save his political future, that the more he kills from the Palestinian people, the more he will be accepted by the Israeli society because unfortunately the society today in Israel mostly are on the right side, right mm. wing, most of them. Mm. And the left and the center are very few actually, very few, very few. So I think by presenting to the Israeli as much blood as possible, yes. Palestinian blood, that will make him at least not a hero as much as he took revenge. Yeah. Acceptable. But, but he must understand one thing. And this is not my talks. It's many an, uh, military analysts were saying that it's going to be very, very costly. Yes. For his troops to enter Gaza on foot. Yes. There will be a surprises. As much as they surprised you when they made the assault inside the city, yes, this has been in preparation for I think two years. If absolutely, I'm not wrong. absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, is there any is more. there any possibility that the generals will recognize this and say, you know, this is perhaps an unwise step for us to take? That's why it's exactly the point. That's why the Israeli army is delaying. Yes. The assault or the ground invasion should have taken place on Sunday because yes. the government of Israel, the war government, they have yeah. created a war government in Israel, already gave the go to go to the Israeli army. Yeah. But the Israeli army is again, <clears throat> you know, I think the army are different than politicians. Yes. They could be more, uh, less rational. About the issue more professional yeah so studying the issue from all uh, from 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 all aspects yeah. that because they cannot uh, afford to lose casualty to lose a lot of army sure. to lot, a, a lot of soldiers right. yes. because this will be second catastrophe second disaster sure. for them it will not be only the 7th of october yeah then again so it will be too heavy for them yeah. and then they have to pull out with the defeat yes which they cannot afford to do that, yeah. I think. But best option is best option is to sit and negotiate. Yes. In my opinion. And I believe, I believe that those friends of the Israeli, the American, yeah. the British, the French, the German, unfortunately, yeah. they have to advise the Israeli. Yeah. They have to give them the right advice because they need it most now. Yeah. Do not take this risk. It's too risky. It's yeah. very risky. If they insist, we're going to be, we're going to pay a heavy price on civilians. Yes. A lot of people are going to die. Many children, 
many women, many men, many elderly people, many lots of destruction. It's going to be a real catastrophe all over Gaza. Yes. Soldiers on the ground are different than sending missile. He wanted to. He's scared. Yeah. When he's scared, he shoots anything, anything he happen. sees. Yes, of course. He does not make dif different between a civilian or or. They can negotiate a deal. They can get back their prisoners. Yeah. Back. And release also the prisoners, the Palestinian, almost 5,000 prisoners. Yeah. So this is, again, this would be my next question. The, where do we go from here? It's very clear that after what happened on October the 7th, you know, I think one of the messages which was sent is we will never go back to the situation we were in before. True. That things, True. things have to be different. That yeah, it's like somebody climbing a ladder and every step he climbs, he breaks. So he'll have no chance to come down again. Yes. Yes, yes, it is that. That is true. That yeah. is possible. That is true. But if the people want to use their head, yeah, all sides, I think it's the best for all of them to avoid more casualty, to avoid bloodshed. Because Israel image, international image is at stake here. Yes. It's already, they have already removed the mask from their face and showed their real face, who they really are. Yeah. The killing of babies killing of children we have 50,000 women pregnant in Gaza yeah this is the United Nation yesterday they expressed concern we have no hospitals for them there is no bed for them what happens when time come for delivery what will yeah. happen to them all this now it's on the in the camera in the international media yes. and I'm really I'm really tell you the first few days the situation related to the uh, Western media are completely different than today. Yeah. Today they start seeing from both eyes. I think I've noticed that. That's true. You know, you see the commentators, the yes, analysts. Absolutely. There's been a shift. A big shift. A big shift. I would yeah. never see <clears throat> before CNN and BBC, Fox yeah. News. But no, today I'm mostly yeah. I'm following this uh, yeah. thing. That's because what I, I, I can well. see some kind of balance some yes. kind of balance yeah. some kind of balance but before it was really uh, they were just like a soldier to the military occupation in yeah. palestine part of them so this shifting taking place should also ring the bell for the israeli that before the ground invasion look what's happening in the in the in the in 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 in, in those countries who consider to themselves as your strategic allies. We're not talking about the Muslim world and yeah. other words. But so if they use their head, I think yeah. they will but not Speaking go. of that, so you <coughs> mentioned, for instance, that the, um, uh, the OIC has been providing so much uh, support to the Palestinian people. But, and I think there's a, there's a role to be played in the region by all of the other countries in the region to you know, bring Israel to the negotiating table to... Yes. Uh, Look, Egypt at the beginning uh, were the first yeah. to understand the scenario. Mm. And that's why they closed the Rafah crossing. Yeah. Egyptian knows already that Israeli intention is to drive people not only from the northern part of Gaza. They will do that yeah. as a first step. But the second step to drive them completely from Gaza to the Egyptian border. Okay. So they will become a refugee in Egypt and yes. they will never be able to come back. Yes. Egyptian knew this yeah. and warned us before yeah. and continue yeah. to warning for everybody. And that's why Egyptian insist no Palestinian will be allowed to enter Egypt unless if they are wounded or they're sick for medical treatment. Yeah. Full stop. Otherwise, and we support the Egyptian for this great yeah. position. We really appreciate that. Yeah. It is time for those people who were being crying for the last 40 years and maybe more that they want to help the Palestinian in liberating Palestine or getting an independent state for the Palestinian. It is time for them today to put that in action, in reals. We want to see that in reality. Yeah. Yes. They should not leave the Palestinian suffer and pay the price alone. Yeah. They should do something so that the pressure will be eased on the people in Gaza Strip. Yes. I urge them, if you want to do something, 
today is the time. And let's talk a little bit more about the long-term resolution of this situation. Is a two-state solution still a possibility? What would that look like? What would need to happen to make that a realistic, inviable option for the Palestinian people? Because, you know, their states in their states. You know, if you're living under oppression and occupation, well, that's not really a, a viable option for the long term. True. So uh, what would what would that look like? I that that would be acceptable to you, the, for instance. The Palestinian the Palestinian leadership in 1990 they took a decision. Yeah. It was a dramatic one. To establish the independent to accept to establish the independent state of Palestine on the border acute the border of 1967. Yes. 4th of June of 1967. Which is, for many viewers, they don't know that. It's only 22% of the historical Palestine. That's right. That was a Gaza, big concession. West Bank, and Jerusalem. It is it's a, a big, big concession. concession. It's yes. a huge concession. When you give the minority, yeah. 6 million Israeli, yeah. you give them 78%, and you, 15 million people, yeah. you get only 22%. That's much, much more than a con concession. Yeah. That's why you see this is the problem between, one of the problems between the PLO in one side and Hamas on the other side. Yeah. Hamas doesn't believe in that. Yes. At all. So it's not fair. Well, I know it's not fair. Yeah. Of course it's not fair. Everybody can tell you it's not fair. But the problem is, what do we have in our hand? Yeah. What do we have? The Israel have the most advanced weapon in the world. The full support of the most powerful people on earth. Yes. What can we do as a Palestinian almost alone, practically alone in the battlefield? Mm. What can we do? We're not angels. So we get the power directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're yes. a human being. Yeah. Our capability are limited. Mm. That's why the PLO took the decision. Why not if we can sit and negotiate on the yeah. table? And find the solution so we can stop the bloodsheds. We can live side by side. Because it's also important for the viewers. It was always Palestine for the last 2,000 years. There was always at least 5 to 10% of the population Jews. Yes, of course. At least. Yes. 5 to. But Muslims, of, Christians, Jews living absolutely, side by side. Yes. Absolutely. And we never ever had a problem in the history between Palestinian no. and the Jews. Yes. Never happened. We even fought together the occupying power with the Roman Empire and others. Yeah. We fought together. So when you decided, when the Zionists decided, took yeah. a strange turn and decided to take all Palestine and to kick us out, this is when the problem happened. Because yeah. people asking me questions. If uh, the resistance movement in Gaza did not take this invasion or whatever or, or offensive, this thing will not happen. No, it's not true. The problem did not start on the 7th of October. Sure. The problem has started from 1947. Yes. And even before that, when the Balfour decided to give Palestine to the Jews as a homeland yes. in 1917. Yes. So this is the truth. And you don't expect people to be under occupation for such a long time and do nothing. Yes. I mean... We left with three choices. We have three choices. Yeah. Either we accept the occupation, live under occupation, keep quiet, yeah. silence, just live to eat and drink. Yes. Unfortunately. And that is the way animals live. Yeah. Which we re reject that. Like a we second class citizen. It can't be done. Not even second, third, third. Because in Israel, I will explain that to you later yeah. about the systematic. Yeah. Or we leave the country <laughs> to become refugees somewhere else, or to resist, yeah. rebel. Yes. Whoever you ask this question, if you give him this choice, the majority of the people, the 90% of the normal human being, will say, no, we will resist. Yes, of course. And that's what the Palestinians did, simply. Yes. Simply, that's what they did. So don't make a big story out of it. It's <laughs> a normal thing. What we did is not something that you wouldn't do. No, everybody, everybody will do the same thing if they have to seize the opportunity. They will do this. But if I could ask, if the Palestinian people were to be able to live peacefully 
in their own state, without oppression, without occupation, as an independent country, a sovereign state, dignity, side by side with Israel. Would Israel's security concerns be addressed? Never. Would never. No. If, no, of course not. Uh, but let me tell you that Israel, uh, it's actually our security always have to be. We have to take care yeah. of our security because they are much more stronger than us, much more powerful. Yeah. They have more money. They have more technology. They have yeah. everything. They have everything. Yeah. We have nothing. Almost we have nothing except will and determination. Yeah. That's the thing. And the right, of course, we have right. Uh, if we able to get our state, as we proposed, yeah. which is the 22% percent of Palestine, percent, yeah. but mainly Jerusalem, of course, because this is something, there's no concession about Jerusalem yes. at all. Never will be. And no leader, a Palestinian leader, will dare think about this issue, a concession related to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I think we will be able to live side by side, just maybe similar to the way we used to live before uh 1917 i see yeah yeah oh, that definitely be... definitely there will yeah. be no problem we are a kind of people we forgive yeah quickly and sometimes we forget we yeah. forget our pain we do that otherwise we would not have sat with the israeli and negotiated a deal yeah. we would never do that but because we forgive and we forget we did that yeah you know, do you feel that slowly the, the tide is shifting? So, for instance, what we saw uh, 10 days ago was a real, uh, uh, the, uh, was the offensive was something which no one could have anticipated uh, militarily. They thought it was probably not possible. Similarly, what I see is when I went to college in the U.S. in the 1980s and the 1990s, mm -hmm. the kind of support you're seeing for the Palestinian people in the Western world, impossible. You couldn't say it. For a politician to even say one word in favor of Palestine, the kiss of death politically, things are changing. Even I'd say within Israel, as you say, on the one hand, I think the Israeli society has become more right wing, regrettably, and uh, in, in many ways. But you also have um, pockets of, you could call it resistance, conscience within there. I feel that the Palestine question mm. is very different. Mm. Um, from uh, the 80s and the 90s, mm. uh, the time of the first and second true, father. True, true, uh, absolutely. You're absolutely. Right. And that must give you hope? There was a book by uh, one of the American senators or congressmen before in the 70s, late 70s, Paul Findlay, his okay. name. Okay, yeah. Remember? He made a book, Who Dare Speak? Yes. Or Who Dare Speak? Yeah. This guy was uh, fully supporting Israel all the time. And then he visited the occupied territory. Yeah. So and then he came up with a different idea yeah. after seeing things on the ground. And then yeah. he became pro-Palestine. So he spoke yes. in favor of the Palestinian. So first he lost his seat. Yes. He can never be a congressman. <laughs> or sure. this is a, And there's many people that say, yeah. Andrew Young was the permanent representative of the United Nations during Carter time at yes. the United Nations. That's right. Just because he met the Palestinian permanent representative, the PLO permanent representative at the United Nations, at the Kuwaiti ambassador house, he had to resign. Yeah. When the uh, Jewish lobby discovered this meeting took place, it was secret, supposed to be a secret meeting. They exposed him and immediately he had no choice but to resign. Although he was a personal friend of Jimmy Carter, the president yes. at that time of the United States yes. of America. To that level, it was. That's how it the, was. I remember. Today, I no, remember. everything has changed. <clears throat> now, this is the benefit. Look, this is the benefit. This, one of the benefits that we uh, have decided to take different action and say, no, we want peace. Yes. Because when we said we want peace, then we have a recognition from the Western world. Yes. This is one of the benefits. Yes. All right. We have many benefits, but this is one of the thing so then we were able to contact the people directly yeah. to contact the political party opposition and ruling party directly explain the situation because we discovered that they knew nothing about palestine or the palestinian issue at all yeah. because they were only subject to the 
One propaganda. propaganda. And this yeah. is propaganda from the people who control the Western media. And still, most of it is controlled by the Jewish lobbies sure. in the Western world. And nobody can uh, uh, say something different than that. So you can hear only the story from one side, one side, one side. Automatically, you will be hating the other side. Sure. But when you hear the story from the other side, then you change your mind. You say, ah, this is the truth then. Yes. So people start seeing realities and start understanding that they were fooled. They were given only fake news. It was a propaganda. It was false information. They were injected the hatred of the Palestinian people. Yeah. And then they discover, no, those people have rights. Yeah. And that's why people start shifting and changing. Yeah. More than 17, 18 years ago, <clears throat> it was said that 78 or 75 or something, 70% of the European believe that Israel is the main source of the disturbance in the Middle East. Mm. The main source. And uh, Israel became today 100%. Yeah. The only source, the only source to destabilize the Middle East is Israel. Look what the Chinese said. Suddenly they said, yeah. clearly, said, because of the oppression, that's what the foreign minister Yangi said, because of the continuous oppression against the Palestinian people, this is what's happening today. It's, I'm not saying that he's justifying the thing, the, the sure. thing but he's, he's saying giving what, it a context giving it a, you have giving to look at context. the historical context you have to look at the, the whole story not just Putin the same thing yeah. Putin exactly the same thing are saying enough is enough yes In a, didn't hear these things before no this is a, like I said <clears throat> so on the one hand you're faced with the in Gaza, the Palestinian people are faced with an existential threat, an existential crisis. On the other hand, maybe there's a new day dawning in the in the in the in the immediate future. Um, Yusuf Bai, thank you so much. It's been wonderful having this conversation. I really appreciate your uh, giving me this time, explaining this to our listeners, our viewers um, on the radio today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for you, and thank you, Bangladesh.